Hey guys, in today's video I will show you a nifty little tool that can come handy when you are trying to find a device on your network. This actually happened to me a few weeks ago. I've uh, installed a number of Sonar devices, then I just found out that they have random generated hostnames, IP addresses thanks to DHCP, so good luck finding them if you have a lot of uh, devices on your network like I do. So, you can see that uh, your router's web interface can still come handy, but let's face it, an IP scanner tool which can restrict uh, finding the devices to a given port range or a list of ports or stuff like that is much more handy. So, if you're interested, keep on watching. Also, if you're new to the channel, my name is Laszlo Marcel and this channel deals with home networking, home automation and sometimes with related stuff like DIY electronics and even a little bit of 3D printing. Anyway, let's continue with today's topic. If you are not a network expert, a security expert, a penetration tester or something like that, then you will find yourself in a struggle to find the right tool. and. Uh, Depending on where you are asking for the tool, you might uh, be totally led sideways and end up in hacking forums and, and who knows what or who knows where. So uh, people will suggest you stuff like use a port scanner, use Nmap, you know what, like many different tools. And uh, yeah, you might even end up with something malicious and masqueraded as a free tool because where there is uh, hacking, there are always people with bad intentions. So before, because of this, I really prefer the expression IP scanner, which is like uh, not really part of the hacking scene. And uh, uh, asking for an IP scanner actually will give you better results. Actually, there are not many tools that are out there that call themselves uh, IP scanners. But just for a second, what's the different between, difference between an IP scanner and a port scanner? So basically they are the same thing, but the port scanner is more intended to be used on a specific host uh, to find a specific port or actually find open ports. Remember, we still want to find the devices on our own network. So an IP scanner instead will take an IP range and will find devices within that IP range that actually uh, answer, like uh, give a positive result on a ping and also uh, has a specific port open. So for example, if you are looking for uh, Tasmota devices, Tasmota by default sits on the 80 uh, HTTP port and uh, if you are just checking your network for uh, devices with uh, port 80, then an IP scanner will be the right tool for you. So in this video, the point is to use the angry IP scanner, which has a funny name, but uh, it's a totally legit tool. I really like it. It's an open source one. So let's just uh, go to its page and uh, uh, let's do a download and I will show you how it works. The easiest way to use the tool is just uh, download this version, so you don't really need an installer. Uh, this will just uh, give you um, an executable around uh, 2 megabytes or something like that, but uh, it will require uh, Java to be installed in your machine. Java installation is uh, pretty much a separate topic, it's like a runtime, you need to download. If you need help with Java, then use the comments. So. Uh, I just downloaded this, the tool itself. So well, let me just show you how does it look like. It's actually quite a minimalistic UI. The default functionality is that you provide an IP address range with the start and the ending IP address, and then just click start and uh, it will find uh, machines uh, within that range with their IP addresses. It will show um, some information about them like What's the host name that is assigned to that machine, what is the IP address of that machine, and what ports are open there. So actually, given how large the range is, um, like does it cover multiple subnets or just a single subnet with uh, pretty much like 254 uh, entries uh, tops, 
then uh, this process can take quite a few minutes. Uh, luckily for you, you can narrow it down because we have a few settings you can uh, play around. And uh, you just go, you can just go the, uh, there to these preferences, go to ports, and you can uh, narrow it down to a list of ports. Like I can uh, search for port 80 for the mentioned Tasmata example, but uh, you can also give multiple ranges and whatnot. So depending on how many uh, ports you specify, then yeah, uh, scanning can take a lot of time. So as you can see, this tool has a quite a set of options and uh, you can actually um, use it for other purposes than just uh, finding your device on the network. But uh, first, just without modifying any settings, just let me show you an example. So this is the subnet I use and then just let me narrow it down a bit because that's a lot let's say 50 and then go 200 so it's still um, 150 ip addresses but um, restricted to a single port so let me see whether do i have any devices so i just click start and there we go so actually these are the devices in that uh, range and uh, scan completed this was pretty fast but again this was a narrow down range so different uh, machines different hosts and uh, you can see these little colored uh, markers here so blue means that there's a host there but uh, it's not answering on the given port so we have these there but then the green marker means that uh, there's a host there that is actually answering on that port so this uh, column obviously makes sense if you specified multiple ports uh, it will just show out of the list out of the range you have provided for the ports uh, on what specific port or ports the machine answered on and uh, funnily there are no Tasmata devices on this uh, in this range but we have found some of my servers and and routers and i think i don't know what device is android 4 whatever is this hmm, interesting i think one of the family's phones probably but the naming is funny Fun fact, by the way, I just uh, ran a second scan and it turned out with a different hostname. And uh, now I know what this hostname is. This is just an Amazon Fire Stick. So it doesn't mean I'm hacked by an unknown Android device lurking on my network or something like that. So we can continue with demonstrating what this tool can do for you. So as I mentioned before, the tool has a different options some of them are obvious some of them are not so much so first when you start exploring your way around the tool the most obvious uh, screen is here with the preferences dialog it's actually the same that you can uh, uh, find under tools and most of these options are just uh, how the scanning is done like how many threads and uh, delays and here some timeouts which are well pretty obvious options also this is what we have already discussed the port selection and for display you have um, like formatting and some basic stuff like language and checking for new versions whatnot so it's not that uh, complicated at all the other set of options which are find um, most more useful is Fetchers. So basically these will add extra columns here and then uh, when uh, the tool does the scanning and fetches information it will fetch data for those as well. So just let me show you in case of MAC address I'm just adding that here click OK now I have a column for MAC address and when I'm doing the scanning 
for this EP range or IP range, the MAC address will also be scanned. So it's quite easy and useful. Also, there's this uh, favorite thing. Basically, these are like uh, profiles saving your settings. So just let me show you once again at current, which means that it will save your current setting for the scan. And then, and then you can manage those. So just once again, at current, save, then go. I can so quickly select profiles here and I can do the managing, like reordering them, renaming, deleting, whatnot. So this is actually a nice functionality. Other than that, the rest of the uh, options are pretty obvious. Also, you can load previously saved results. You can uh, export results. Okay, what else? So as you can see, the tool is quite uh, easy to use. And uh, besides uh, finding your uh, device on the network, there are some other uses you can think of. Uh, first of all, obviously you can use it as a standard port scanner. So you can scan a single device for open ports. This is useful if you have, for example, a Docker host running many services and you want to check that you haven't uh, accidentally opened up something you didn't really want to. Then, obviously, you can um, extend this uh, functionality to your whole network and uh, provide a big IP range here with a full range of ports. Then, um, obviously, it will take a lot of time, but you can have an overview of your network about your open ports. These functionalities I mentioned before, like the favorites, the uh, loading the IP range from a text file. Actually, I haven't showed it yet. So here you can select text file, which means uh, the dialog slightly changes and uh, the input will be taken from a text file and you can list multiple items there. So with this functionality and with the favorites, you can actually use this uh, tool, the Angry IP Scanner, as like a testing tool and you can run it in a recurring basis like I don't know, do the same test every week. Although my preference would be something that can be automated, something that is a command line tool. But then again, it's your choice. So as you can see, the Angry IP Scanner is not really a complicated tool, but it can prove itself to be pretty useful. And yeah, it's free. Uh, this is pretty much I wanted to show you about it. Based on this, you can start using it right away. Uh, and also don't... Uh, worry about me showing my MAC addresses here. You know, a MAC address is just internal. So what do you think about this tool? Personally, I really prefer open source tools and portable ones, small ones. I'm really not the fan of those uh, huge bloated fancy UIs. So for me, this is just a clean, easy and uh, efficient solution. So if you have a better solution for the same problem or found uh, some problems with, the, with this piece of software, use the comments below. Other than that, I think, I think it's time to conclude this video. So I hope you liked it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing for future videos. And uh, it also helps me a lot. And um, yeah, hope to see you next week, next time with another video. Bye. You're still here. That's good, because that means you kind of like my video. If so, feel free to check out these other videos too. And uh, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. That helps me a lot. And uh, yeah, if you click the bell button, you will get also notified about new videos.